This may look like an ordinary 1970s Polaroid instant camera, but actually it's been modified so that when you take a picture, it prints onto thermal paper. I know this probably isn't an original idea. It's almost certainly been done before, but I wasn't gonna let that stop me. And besides, you can't buy a camera like this, and I now have one. There were two parts to building this. Uh, one is the hardware side, where we repurposed uh, off-the-shelf webcam and off-the-shelf thermal printer, and through a colossal amount of cutting and drilling and gluing, managed to squeeze everything inside that case. Uh, the other part is the software. Now, if we had been really clever, we could have repurposed the ARM Cortex-M0 chip that was present on the circuit board for the thermal printer. It was a uh, Giga Devices, I think, which is a clone of STM32F1 series. And um, had we been able to reverse engineer that, we could have directly interfaced the camera to the thermal printer driver board, which would have been amazing, but uh, a lot of work. So instead I went with the easy option and stuck a Raspberry Pi in there. So this is an embedded Linux device, and we want it to boot as fast as possible. So this, this isn't going to run Raspbian, you know, the, the default distribution for Raspberry Pi. That, would, uh, that just takes far too long to boot. I want to turn this on, and it's immediately ready to take a picture. And the way to do that is to construct our own uh, image with just the Linux kernel and the very bare minimum of packages to get it to run. You know, I want it to be as lightweight as possible. And there's a very easy way to do that um, through something called build root. So using that, we can just uh, select the kernel and the packages we want and cross compile it into a very, very minimal image. And this was, this was quite an adventure because um, even there, the boot time originally was, you know, seven or eight seconds, which is unacceptable for a camera. Um, and so it was uh, very much uh, uh, an interesting adventure through the various things you have to do to speed up the boot time. It now boots in about two seconds, which is um, it's pretty good. Now there's a convenient connector on the top here. It's intended for a flash unit, but I rewired that so that it can connect a USB serial adapter onto the top because it's just a standard 0.1 inch header. Um, so we can get our console running even while it's uh, fully assembled. I was actually quite entertained by the fact that the uh, default board rate for the serial is um, 115 200, which, you know, that sounds fine, it's completely standard, but we were squeezing every last drop in terms of the boot time, and it turned out that one of the biggest uh, parts of the boot was dumping the kernel messages over the serial port uh, at at that board rate was taking about 0.9 seconds, which is now a significant chunk of the boot time. So um, speeding that up to one megaboard uh, drastically reduced the boot time. Anyway, most of this Linux stuff isn't really suited to the uh, format of a YouTube video. So uh, if you want to learn more about that, uh, have a look at the project page on my website. There's a few more things I'd like to do to this before we call it finished, such as uh, improving the way to load a roll of paper. Um, so you don't have to do this often. One of these is like, um, well, I haven't measured it, but at least three or 400 pictures. Um, the original flap that's used to load the sheet film cartridges just isn't big enough to fit one of these through. So we'd either have to you know, cut a big monstrous flap in the bottom or something, um, which, you know, it would work, but it would be kind of ugly. Or, Potentially, we could reverse the feed motor so that it can kind of suck the entire roll inside through the front. But I'm not convinced that would work. It would probably um, just crumple up inside unless you had a motorized reel to take it up. Another thing I was hoping to make use of is the autofocus motor. So that's, that's, the mechanism is still intact for that. Um, just for some kind of feedback while the camera is working, you could just rack it back and forwards. Uh, you know, I managed to modify the shutter mechanism so that um, the solenoid present uh, is via a MOSFET wired to one of the GPIO uh, on the Raspberry Pi. So when you take a picture, it fires the shutter without actually blocking the webcam uh, for the duration of the picture taking. 
Um, so I was thinking, you know, with the autofocus, we could just rack it back and forwards while it's working, you know, until it's ready to take a picture, something like that. There is definitely an artistic quality to these grainy black and white pictures. It's everything I could have hoped for. The whole thing is, you know, solid enough that I can take it to a party, hand it over to people and let them have fun taking pictures. Um, all it needs now is a way to automatically digitise these paper strips. Some kind of film scanner or something. So if uh, you want to learn about Linux and about how to get a Raspberry Pi to boot really, really quickly, uh, check out the write-up on mitzella.com. The link is in the description.